Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord John. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this Tuesday night Bible study. In the name of Jesus. Oh, it's Wednesday night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We're here every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Welcome to Empowering Word Ministries from Clinton, Maryland. I thank you, Lord, that we are at 7537 Old Alexandria Ferry Road in Clinton, Maryland. That's in the Centerplex Business Park. If you're anywhere in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, come out, come out. We're here on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. and every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. at the Hope of Judah Church. Give honor and glory to the people of this house. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You can reach us on the by email at ewmword at gmail.com. Glory to God. I'll be reading tonight's scripture. It is from the book of Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Starting with verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Hallelujah. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Glory to God. Glory to God in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in this place. Father, we thank you, God, for your word, God. We thank you for your word, God, that you've given us to lead us each and every day of our life and each and every step while we're here on this planet that they call earth. And we thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. A glory to God. If you have been watching, listening, heard about this ministry one of the things that you learned on last week is that you have some buttons from your past it's a few buttons and somebody can push them they know the exact combination they push those buttons and it sends us kind of spending it sends us out of the character that we have uh, been living and the character that we portray when we're in the walls of the church um, the enemy will continue to push those buttons. He's never going to stop for what has worked in the days past. So he has no reason to believe that it will not continue to work. And he has uh, waited for us today and he has pushed our buttons. We're going to do this broadcast. If it took us until 7.59, we're going to do the broadcast. The question is, will you press your way to get what God has for you? The question is, will you press your way? Do you have the patience to get what it is that God has for you? Glory to God. So today as we enter in on Bible study, we're going to be mindful of the time and we, we're going to exalt God. Glory to God because he's worthy. Uh, but we're going to uh, learn some things today. So as we get ready for the next step, glory to God today's topic as we continue we're talking about a real change in 2013 we need a real change we don't need a resolution uh, we don't need a promise that we made to our cousin and them you know why we were sipping that champagne on new year's eve uh-huh not y'all because y'all holy i forgot 
Uh, but for the ones that are trying to live righteous, uh, that one glass of champagne they said wasn't going to hurt them. It was, it was apple juice in the name of Jesus. So they had it. Um, but we're not going to live that way and going forward. We're going to have some real change. Uh, so tonight we're going to talk about a topic, new creature, new passcode, now what? You are a brand new creature. You've given your life to Christ. You've pressed your way to get in here. You've, you've gotten your salvation. You're a brand new creature. You're a brand new creature. Why? Because God says so that old things are passed away and all things are new. You're a new creature. You have the promise of eternal life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. But though you had that promise, though you believe, the enemy was pushing your button. So we talked about, okay, ooh, let's change the passcode. So we changed the passcode. Now what? Now what? What happens is when you become a new creature, when you have a new passcode, when you have hit the reset button and all things are new, now you need a guide. Hallelujah. You need a guide. You need to understand how am I supposed to live now? I knew how to raise hell. I had that thing down to a cold, smooth science. I knew how to, as my grandma say, I knew how to act a show enough fool. I had that down. I knew exactly how much alcohol to drink, how much weed to smoke, how many hits I needed to take to get me just right. I had it down. I was in the club. I knew who I was pursuing. I had it down. I knew who was my friend and who was my foe. He got on red. I got on blue. It's easy. I had that thing down. If you rub me the wrong way and hit that particular combination first, I cussed you out. Then it could be on and popping if you were still standing there. I had that life down cold. But this new life, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Seem like everybody in it is perfect. I don't know how I'm supposed to live. I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think that I can do this thing. I'm, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what steps to take. You're not the first one. There were thousands, millions who've had the same question. So I'm going to read to you a quote from a new Christian. I spend so much time thinking and worrying about things uh, that don't have anything to do with what God says I should be doing. If it sounds like you, you can shout. I worry about things that I cannot control. I spend too much time thinking about things that don't matter. Not enough time in prayer, meditation, connecting with God, and just seeking, understanding. Then we join the church, and we begin down another road. We got, we've been saved for three seconds. A road of judging and hypocrisy that must be unbearable for God to watch. But he loves us anyway. We need to fill all our time and days with love. I need to not hide from that which I am called and was born to do. Praise and worship God. Love others as I would like to be loved. And use the gifts that God has blessed me with to lead others to salvation, his love, and abundant living. It sound real good, don't it? That thing sound real good. Sound real good. Make me want to shout. The thing sound real good. How you do it though? Whenever you're going over a territory that you've never been over before, when you go to a strange land, a new place, a new creature, how am I supposed to live? You wasn't the first one that had that question. Thousands died before you, some of them by the hand of God for failure God sent his only begotten son Christ died for us bore our sins rose for us that we will have eternal life and a 
prepared the way to God. But first, he showed us how to live. Before death, he showed us how to live life. See, he walked the walk. He didn't just talk the talk. And when you start to understand, when you, if you reap work so you can eat the fruits thereof, what you'll find is that he had a moment of doubt. He had a moment of doubt. You'll find out that he got mad. Christ, you're him. He got mad. Turned over the tables in the junk. Not, not outside, in the church. He <laughs> turned the tables over in here. Y'all playing big? Oh, wait a minute. That's too close to home. Wait a minute. Y'all trading money in here? This is the house of the Lord. Uh -uh. He got mad. He who was perfect got angry. But you somehow believe that if you get mad, you've lost your salvation. Somehow you're going to hell because you lost your temper. Christ gave you a path that you could repent and be forgiven. We need to learn what God does. The Bible says that when we go to God, and we ask for his forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We are forgiven and that thing God casts into the sea of forgetfulness. We need to find a sea of forgetfulness for ourselves. We need to learn how to forgive us. Our greatest hindrance isn't an external foe. It's an internal foe. All it takes to send us spinning is the same word in the name of Jesus. If you don't ever overcome anything, overcome somebody simply asking, are you sure? Because this is how he comes. Deborah. co -passer. You look like you got an attitude. You leading people and laying hands on people. I don't think you ought to have that spirit of cussing right there in your throat. Pastor, I know I punch your passcode, but you're supposed to just take it. You ain't supposed to get mad. If I hook you up to the blood pressure machine right now, the little red thing, and just bust on about the thing, I can look at you and tell. You remember, your mama told you when you mad, your jaws get tight. Now, we begin to doubt God. Because if we begin to doubt now, that we are who God says we are, then we're not doubting us, we're doubting God. Because God says you're saved. God said that healing is yours, salvation is yours, and that forgiveness is yours if you just ask. If you just ask. But you're so busy beating yourself up, you have not forgiveness, because you ask not for forgiveness, so you ain't got none. Ask. Develop a sea of forgetfulness so that you can be free. A free woman, when she walked by me, I ought not hear the sounds of change rattling, for she's free. Shackled by nothing. But you think somehow, because the test came, and he questioned you, you said, well, maybe. You're not the first one he asked the question to, for he asked, he who is perfect. If you are the son of man, then. He asked the first Adam. He went to Eve and the God said, you sure that's what God said? If you will stop beating yourself up, you will find that the question 
that's hindering you the most. Think about it. Learn the enemy's MO. The question that hinders you the most is the same question. All over this earth, black, white, yellow, brown, man, woman, child, adult, same question. You sure? See, for the baby who's learning how to walk, got the courage up to stand. Then he got the courage. There was something on the other side. He had to have it. So he started moving towards it. Legs wobbly. Not standing strong, but he moving. To him, he moving at light speed. To the rest of us, it's a slow crawl. But he moving. He has a blessed assurance that that shiny thing, he going to get it. Just give me time. Fast as I'm moving, I'm going to get it. Fast as I'm going, I'm going to get it. Woo, look at me now. In his mouth, oh, I'm smoking now. I'm moving. He barely moving. He went about four inches. But he, and then it, he wanted it so bad. His face, his face get to shaking and slob running out of his mouth. He, just, he wanted it bad. Oh, got to have it. Got to have it. He knows not that he can't make it until you say, oh, come on, baby. Come on. You just cast a seed of doubt in his mind that he did not have. Oh, don't fall. Oh, 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 fall. What? Uh, he knew not of the fall till you ask him the question. Let him go. We like the newborn baby when we get saved. We, it's something that we've been told about. It's something over there. Press towards the mark, which is the high calling in Christ. Jesus, I'm coming. And we wobbly. And sometimes, on our journey on these wobbly legs, that thing hit us and we get so excited. We just cry. Oh, shut up. We just haul out. Slob all out your mouth. You're on your way. Encouraged by the word of God. The newborn babe in Christ. Knowing not of traditions of the church. Knowing not of the traditions of man. Don't have sense enough to know that you can't have all these blessings that God said. As far as you're concerned, once you get saved, all the blessings are yours in about 15 minutes. You about to get showered with blessings. You expecting to leave out of the church. And it's a Bentley parked outside with, with bags of money in the back. And the dream woman that you're not going to get. But she in the car. Except for your wife, you can take her with you. She got to get out though. That's where you at. The promises of those things. The promises of understanding. The promise of healing. The promise of the ability to be able to speak those things that be not as though they were. They're exactly that. They're the promises of God and every word is true. And you're going to have them. You want them right now. And you think you're moving at light speed. But to God, a day is but a minute. Just like the baby who thinks he's moving at light speed when he's going for his brain can't process time, space, or distance. God's thoughts aren't like our thoughts. God doesn't perceive time the way we perceive time. So to God, it ain't been but a blink of an eye. What's wrong? Why are you discouraged? There's another one who saw us stand, who recognizes that twinkle in our eye. And he come asking the same question, for he comes not but to kill, steal, and destroy. His mission is to get you to fall, and he simply asks the same question. You sure? I don't think he was paying attention in church. Is that what they said? You in there with your white tee on. Everybody in there got on Brooks Brothers, Tahari, Tahiri, St. John. You ought to be shamed just to be in there. Maybe you should sit closer to the back next time so you don't embarrass your mama looking all raggedy. You fresh off the streets. You was hooking last night. You think just with a word that you entitled to all these blessings of God. They got you tricked up in here. Come on, we got to get out of here. Here he comes. All those words to say the same question. Are you sure? 
what's required for your salvation isn't a certain amount of tithing. What's required for your salvation isn't that you wear a certain attire. What's required for your ta- salvation is not the eloquence of your speech. What's required for your salvation has nothing to do with manly status, a womanly status, or degrees. What's required for salvation has nothing to do with time served. Have anything to do with any of those. What's required for salvation is simple. Confess and believe. That's it. Prices, come on. Everything that deacon so-and-so who been in the church for 45 years is entitled to, you've been in 40 seconds, and you're entitled to it as well. The bishop and the apostle who seem to give every waking moment to serving God, what they're entitled to, you're entitled to. 15, 50, 95. God is not a respect of persons. The same. The flaw in our, as we believe and as we stand, we press you to the Bible, not to test your educational level. But what you need next is some instructions about how to live. You don't know how. You're a new creature. If you decided to leave here and go live in Mexico, you could stumble and bumble your way through. But you best to get to learn how to speak Spanish. You need to learn how to speak Spanish. To fully understand, you need to learn how to speak Spanish in this new land, Mexico or Spain. If you go to France, you best learn how to speak French to be able to receive your full status now as a French citizen. You've been grafted in by the blood of Jesus so that you can fully understand how to live to fully because some of you receiving stuff and don't even understand the blessing you received why because you don't speak the language you don't understand the language why because you won't study You you have to read it verse a day we'll give you one oh, turn the TV on Turn on your iPhone, you're going to get at least three verses. Some days, 19 or 20, if we're doing Bible study. Okay? Get get them books out. Get the Bible out. I'm going to wait a minute. BibleGateway.com. Glory to God. Pick the NIV version. It's simple. Pick the King James version if you understand. Front of the Bible, Old Testament. Back of the Bible, New Testament. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you the quick way to find everything in the Bible. Front of the Bible, right at first page. Table of contents. The book of Matthew. New Testament. Chapter number five. Book of Matthew. Chapter number five. You should already be there because that is where the scripture reading was from. I got papers all over the place. The papers all over the place, don't let them trick you. It's to keep me from keeping you here for about two hours. Because I get excited about God. This thing got to kind of hone me. Hold on. Verse number 17 says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Okay? 
Why? Jesus showed us how. Then, we needed some instructions after he left. He gone. For how he do that? What do I do now? Okay. Go back to the Old Testament. Book of Psalms. 119. There's some scripture over time when you study the word that um, you'll find that people who've been in the church for a while go to these areas for encouragement. Psalm 119. Verse number 162. See, that's a lot of one. You could, I think it took me uh, two months to read that the first time. It's a lot of verses. The NIV called this area sin and shin. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. I hate and detest falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I wait for your salvation, Lord, and I follow your commands. I obey your statutes, for I love them greatly. I obey your precepts and your statutes, for all my ways are known to you. Jesus came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. The law wasn't bad, for we need some guidelines. Let me show you why. Newborn baby. Listen. Come on, baby, if you get nervous, look at daddy. Don't worry about the rest of the people. Look at daddy. One step. Come on, you're doing it. Take another step. Come on, I'm going to reach out to you. Come on. You just keep coming. You keep coming. Don't worry about them. Don't pay no attention to them. Come on. Daddy right here. Mm -mm, don't sit down now Mm -mm, don't sit down come on 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 does she do it perfectly the first time no the newborn baby now though has the courage that she can stand she knows she can stand and she knows that if she stands and begins to move towards daddy that he, he's going to lead her and guide her every step of the way you need, it, you need the rules so that God can lead you and guide you every step as you move towards him you got a tattoo because everybody was doing it Ask for forgiveness. Come on, baby, that's all right. You slept with somebody you weren't supposed to after you got saved. Uh, uh, You repented. God forgave you. Come on, baby. See, salvation is eternal. Forgiveness is yours if you would just ask. But you have to have the guide of the law to know how to live your life. Else you would get saved and sleep with all them people over there. Not knowing without a God that it was wrong. You need this God to help you. You need to understand what you've been grafted into. We, we rush through the Bible. See this Bible study. We're going to learn some stuff. We rush through the Bible. We run past words. And the Bible says that my people that perish for lack of knowledge doesn't mean that you're a scholar, that you will see something, not be sure, and that you will press to get some understanding. As some folks have been reading the NIV for years, Sinish, and that's a title they kept on going. What is it? Shin also stands for the word should I? Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold up. What? A name for God. Uh oh. Because of this, a Kohen, this is in Judaism, you need to know the foundation from which it came from. You know, 
this land that you got grafted into, you ought to have some understanding about the place that you are now a citizen of where you have rights to. You should know a little something about it. Forms the letter Shin with his hands as he recites the priestly blessing in the mid 1960s. Actor Leonard Nimoy used a single handed version of this gesture to create the Vulcan hand salute. Single handed gesture of the Shin for his character, Mr. Spock, on Star Trek. The letter Shin is, all, is often inscribed on a case containing a mazua. What is that? A scroll of parchment with biblical text written on it. The text contained in the Mazua is the Shema Israel prayer, which caused the Israelites to love their God with all their heart, soul, and strength. The Mazua is situated upon all the door frames in a home or establishment. Sometimes the whole word Shaddai will be written. So when you breeze and pass it, slow down, get you some understanding. Because when you see Shin, it's calling for all the Israelites and those grafted in to love their God with all their heart, soul, and strength. The Shema Israel prayer also commands the Israelites to write God's commandments on their heart. The shape of the letter Shin mimics the structure of the human heart. The lower larger left ventricle, which supplies full supplies the full body, and the smaller right ventricle, which supplies the lungs, are positioned like the lines of the letter Shin. So if you saw the symbol you would know that you should love God with all of your heart. When the enemy is dialing your old passcode, beep, 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 ah, you heard it. Beep, 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 ah, they're just missing the last digit. Love the Lord God with all your heart. Love the Lord God with all of your heart. Lord, I, in the name of Jesus, here I come. I made a mistake, God. Forgive me. Done. Your forgiveness doesn't come through a phone call to me. Your forgiveness in the name of Jesus, done. Forgiven. If you know, if I just keep pressing, if I stumble, I can get up and keep going. Because if I slide back, I can get up and keep going. Now, love the Lord God. With all your heart, I'm just moving towards my daddy. Uh -huh. You sure you're going to make it? Absolutely. Because I love him with all my heart. I can't breathe without him. I can't live without him. Every breath in my body belongs to him. Get off me. Get off me. Mm -mm. I can do it. Come on. I can do it. We try to help our granddaughter. She said, get off me. I can do it. Come on. Mm -mm. Get off me. I don't need you to help me. I got God. I can do it. She got sense enough to know that there's something on the inside of her that says, I can make it. I can do it. I can make it. I can do this. It seems strange to me. It's like a puzzle. I don't know all the answers, but I can make it. It's something on the inside of her telling her, I can make it. I can do it. I can make it. And she stumped, but keep going. And Jay fall a little bit. Come on, he keep coming. I use the children because that's what we're like. Your length of time sitting in that chair doesn't have anything to do with it. The Bible says I'll know you by your fruits. I'll know I'll know the age of your understanding by your fruits. 
You've been in the building 45 years. But the age of your understanding is about seven years old. Why? By your fruits. Watch. We out in the world professing to be deacon so and so. But by your fruits, the cashier heard you cut somebody slam out three days ago. Oh, he got a lot more. I need to pray for him. He got a loan. I thought he'd been in church 25, 30 years. Here's, what, here's the part you don't hear. I don't believe I want to go to church over there. I'm do that by myself. By your fruits. We overcome that doubt by the blood of the lamb in our testimony. The line is plum slam crazy in the safe way. And you stand and just smiling. Jesus, be a fence all around me every day. And the cashier open up. Come on, sir. Because you didn't get, oh, Lord, where's the cashiers? I can't believe this. I'm trying to get the Bible study. They know they ought to have more cashiers in this. The game, come on. And want, come on now. I can't be in here all day. I was in the service. The pastor talked too long. My goodness, sir. Can I, yeah, come on, come on. Y'all ain't got no cashiers in here. Y'all don't know the day Sunday in this football season. Lord, have mercy. I can't. Look, I got, I got people coming to the house. We got barbecue. The age of your understanding the age of what they see says, wow, deacon. Because the enemy will whisper to them, you know that's deacon so-and-so. Are you deacon so-and-so? Uh-uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all need to get this together. The age of your understanding shows Jesus showed us how to walk this. He didn't just talk the talk. He walked the walk. If he was tested at the 11th hour, if he had a doubt in his mind, he asked a question And then said, nevertheless, Lord, thy will be done. If he got angry. If he needed to get away from these people. <laughs> come on now, read the whole word. He slipped out the back. Those of you who've been studying, you know he slipped out the back on him. The most, slipped out the back. Come on. He's supposed to say that about God. I can say anything that is said in this book. I can't say anything that you say. I can't do anything that you do. But anything is said in this book about the way Christ lived, I can do it without a doubt in my mind. If I'm not sure, I can turn to this word. When angry, it didn't say he didn't get mad because he was mad. I tried not to be hulking out, turning on for no tables. But he had a moment of anger. There was disrespect in the house. He was angry about that. He had a moment of doubt about was this too much, too big? This cup. So why is it, please understand, that when you have a moment of doubt about is this too big God's in the house this call is it too great when you've done all that you can do the Bible says stand El Shaddai it 
if it wasn't so big God wouldn't need you he wouldn't need to come do it you got to do your part though you have to show up to the place where he's instructed you to be who else is there is irrelevant it's me and these three people When you get this walk, when you get full understanding about this walk with God, you'll understand this thing. As long as these feet do what they're supposed to, the eyes, the ears, and the rest of the body shall be blessed. We got a problem though, if these feet, if my feet, don't bring me here for how can the eye receive healing you do your part anointed one of God for you may not stand on this side of the camera but God is giving you your portion and your work to do see we in the vineyard y'all everybody works Everybody got something to do. And you may have never heard of the place that God has told you to go. And you may have never heard of the pastor or the apostle or the preacher at the place that God has told you to go. The only reason that you can view me by internet is because God told me to. Because I don't need the accolades of people. And if you know me just a little bit, you'll know that I kind of shy away from it. Just give that, that, all that praise goes to God. But know this about this place. Me and my wife sitting here. Know this. What's said on Sunday, we walked into by Wednesday, both of us slamming to it. God speaks a blessing, it's coming. God gives a word for me to give to the people. I heard it first. I need to get prepared. Buttons getting pushed. If you begin, see, you change the passcode. You change you change the passcode. You change your passcode. Y'all change your passcode. If you didn't change your passcode, it don't apply to you. But if you change your passcode, watch this. If I go to the bank today without the proper identification and and without the right password they won't give me no money out right I could have my wife's car slide that jump but if I ain't got the right passcode (laughs) can't get nothing out of that player so the enemy can dial you if you've changed your passcode he can dial your old passcode all he wants He can't make no withdrawals. Know this. If he dialing your old passcode, it's only one thing he can do at the bank without identification. What is it? He can make a deposit. He can make a, he can, oh, he's dialing your passcode. All he's doing is dial, it's a deposit about to come into your account. It's a deposit of healing about to come into your account. It's a deposit of overcoming about to come into your account there's a deposit of promotion about to come into your account there's a portion about to be deposited for he doesn't have the right identification or the correct passcode he can't make a withdrawal all he can do is God can use that which he meant for bad to bless you so the dialing of the old passcode should be an indication that your blessing is on the way. The enemy saw it too because he's trying to come withdraw money that I ain't even got in my hands yet. But the fact that he's trying to dial in is an indication. Glory to God. Holy El Shaddai. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you for the healing in advance. How do I know? Because the enemy heard it released from heaven. He trying to dial the old passcode, the access to get anything out of there he can get because he heard it released. Only one in the here release is us. We too holy to hear it. 
we, we too holy. We too busy knowing everything. That's why we didn't hear. Because we don't have ears to hear it. But in time, as the age of our understanding grows, it'll be easier for us to hear too. Oh, I heard it. Because we'll do crazy stuff like pray a prayer and write it down. Write the vision down. Write the vision upon tap. Make the vision plain. Write it down upon tablets that he who sees it might run. Today's Sunday. Uh, today is Wednesday. Wednesday, January 16th. Wrote that down. In the morning. Friday. I got, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got an expectation. In the name of Jesus. Three years from now. You'll be taking a red pen joint. Mm-hmm, that one came. Mm-hmm, that, what you say? Oh, what? What you say? Mm-hmm. See, you've been blessed. You're receiving that what you asked God, but you don't know because you prayed it two years ago and you forgot. The enemy didn't forget, though. He heard it release. And that joker dialed up your passcode. The blessing that's coming today is a prayer that you made in June. And he heard you speak it out of your mouth. Why? Because you won't follow instructions and speak it in tongues. Because that contradicts with the religion that you're following or something. Even though, anyway, you won't speak it in tongues so that only you and God understand. You said it out loud. The enemy heard you said it out loud. Guess what he did? Wrote it down. Mm-hmm. Be looking for that one. Pop! That thing got released from heaven. Mm-hmm. He looking at the time. Yep, it's getting close now. Let me dial this passcode and push her buttons because she only remember that thing she act for in June. Watch her act funky. And the blessing came. You know what? I need to tell you something, but it came over there. We had, we had, we just had to tell. You know what you need? Let me tell you what you. Let me tell you something. We, we are, and the blessing came over there. See, there was one in line who had been watching you, and they had decided they were looking for a particular person, and they took a break from work today to go to Wegmans, and they've been looking for a certain individual, and they ain't been able to find them. And he said, well, look, don't none of these applications look like the one that we were looking for. They're not in there. I, in my spirit, that's, that's not there. Let's go get something to eat. Unbeknownst to you, they saw you from afar. The moment they got in your space, they knew it was something about you. Mm. Something about you. When we get through this line, we're going to talk to her. Get through this line, we're going to talk to her. Because I heard her talking to the lady over there, and it sounds like she's exactly what we're looking for. And the enemy dialed your passcode. Boop, 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 boop. She is not talking on her cell phone while I'm waiting in this line to check. She, did she just answer her cell phone? And now you get to sharing a lot of stuff with the young lady at the cash register, and ain't none of it holy. But those who were watching, and believing that you were everything they had been looking for but you began to display a character wow I guess we were wrong and you've been trying to get a job since June and God put you in position to bring the job to you They try to ask the other lady for your phone number so they could call you, but she didn't. I ain't going to give you her phone number. You need to ask her. But before they could get to you, boop, 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 that impatience code, that he got that joint on speed dial. Boom, 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 boom. And now you fussing this girl out. You hurt her feelings and it cost you to forfeit. cause the time delay so now this process has to begin again might be next June that's the importance of believing in Christ and then taking our life and as best as we are able 
to guide it by the instructions that God has given us. To line it up with this. Are we going to have some misses? Absolutely. Are we going to have some stumbles? Absolutely. This is probably not deep enough for the Bible scholars. We're going to miss some stuff. If we stumble today, I need to get in this word to find out because we, let me go back here. Yeah. David, he stumbled a lot. Let me look up at him. Mm-hmm. This remind me, remember that scripture? And what you'll find out is that the thing that you fell in, that you made the mistake, that on Sunday, it was in the scripture reading. God was speaking into your future, but it didn't apply to you at that moment on your time schedule where you moving in light speed like the baby. But God had a plan for Wednesday. This was about Wednesday, not Sunday. This word on Wednesday, it make I don't know what he's talking about. That don't make sense to me. But God is speaking a word into your life about Friday. Friday at the moment where you were going to give up. Friday at the moment where you were going to settle for less than what God spoke in your life before. You're about to settle. Somebody's about to settle. I can hear the thing coming this way through the internet. Somebody's about to make a decision to settle. This word is about you for what's coming on Friday. Get ready. Buckle your seatbelt. Get ready. Buckle your seatbelt. It's more than what you ask God for. You have in your mind something and a level and God has more than you ask him for. More than you ask him for. Listen, we want to thank you for joining us at Empower One Word Ministries for our Wednesday night Bible study. And we pray that this message is a blessing to your life. I want you to know that we love you to life. If you want us to call you to ask why you wasn't at church, uh uh-uh. We're not. We love you whether you're in your seat or not. We love you when you stand, every, every step of your journey through your growth. We love you. But we want you to email us. We want you to tell us how you're doing. We want to know. We want to know. We want to hear from you. So take a few minutes and send us a few lines. The co-pastor and I love you with everything that's in us. And we're going to continue to bring you these broadcasts. Know that if we say we're going to broadcast at 7 o'clock that we're doing everything humanly possible to get this thing on at 7 o'clock and we ask that you pray with us as we grow accustomed to the new technology in the building when we say we're going to be here at 8 o'clock and that's too early for you You have to develop a press to receive from God. You have to develop a press. You have to be willing to press your way in the word. You have to be willing to get that cup of coffee, drink that tea. When it's a scripture that God has put on your heart and you're bound and determined um, to read it. Are you sure you can read that thing in the morning? You ain't got to read it tonight. But now you get up in the morning and the kids acting plum slam off the hook crazy, swinging off the chandeliers like they ain't got two cents let alone three and now it's the afternoon and now you left your bible at the house because of all the chaos that broke out and now it's lunchtime you're going to read it but your boss wanted you to work through lunch and now it's the evening and something comes up on your way home and you know full well (sighs) this right out of that scripture I was supposed to read but I can't remember that was his plan to distract you so you got to develop a press something invigorating about being in church at 8 o'clock glory to God remember them sunrise services of glory to God by and by oh, and if my wife have it her way we'll never sing a hymn in this place 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for joining us. We are excited about being in Clinton, Maryland. Um, Sometime soon we're going to share with you this testimony about all that God has done since July. You just would not, only God, you just wouldn't believe it because the things are not humanly possible. God. And he can use anybody, any way he decide to. Y'all have a blessed rest of the week. It's Wednesday. Celebrate, because you made it. Glory to God. We'll see you on Sunday. Thank you. God bless you, and have a blessed week.